the future. Awesome. Right? <laughs> Right. Well, speaking right. of the future, how how are you feeling about it? I mean, you you have your event coming up, you have music coming up. What do you feel? How are you feeling about your future as an artist right now? Um, it's really interesting because I feel like right now is such a beautiful time. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that people feel weird about saying, "Oh, you know, the pandemic was actually quite the boon," uh, but it really was for me. And I think people really started talking about out of tragedy comes sort of beautiful colors. Sometimes people really started talking about race and gender and disability, which are my three things. Um, yeah. And so it really opened up like a, uh, I guess, a nexus for conversation. Yeah. And that allowed me to kind of like step in, swoop in and really start doing what I've always wanted to do, which is talk about these things uh, through music and yeah. bring these conversations to the forefront through music. And that's really what Black Girl Cornrows is. It's kind of a culmination of my work uh, that I've been doing for the past couple of years as a cultural sort of advocate uh, mixed with my sort of music creation, my love for EDM, my love for house music. And uh, my need for us to actually start talking about something other than um, feeling uncomfortable and, and stepping away. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think it's, it's so funny, you know, it, it's a weird thing, the pandemic, because there are people who are like, feel a little shamed at how well it went for them. <laughs> yeah. yes. For some people, it went really, really well. And it's, and I'm not talking Jeff Bezos. I'm talking like, <laughs> you know, people who like they discovered new talents. They actually went for their dreams. They kind of woke up versus people who lost their dreams. They kind of yeah. feel like they're still in sleep mode. Yeah. It was a very uh, like divided time in terms of who could thrive versus who just faded. Yeah, I think one of the things that the pandemic gave to us was the ability to reflect. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, just the rat race of life <laughs> takes away that ability to sit down and say, who am I? What am I doing here? What do I actually want in life? Am I happy? Do I even like the people I'm surrounding myself with? Like, yes, there was a, I mean, as people talk about, oh my gosh, there was a lot of divorce or breakups or whatever. But I think that, you know, on the flip side, there was a lot of people finding like, you know, I just put together this kind of lunchbox of what I thought my life should be. And now I'm realizing, you know what, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Or people are going, you know what, oh, don't quit your job. What are you going to do? You have no safety net. And people are like, you know what, I just want to do whatever I want to do now. Because it turns out that the world is fickle. And God said, whatever. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think the pandemic reflection you is something you gain with time. And it gave us a lot of time. And I think that there were obviously some very depressing reflections. Yes. Because, you know, and and in that time felt like it got wasted, but it also gave, you know, you like your music, your journey, and yeah. your courage to kind of kind of speak to you. And I think that's what reflection is. You're finally speaking to yourself. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a really, I think you're hitting the needle on the head. So for since like 2016, 17, I was signed to this uh, pretty cool management, EDM management. So they would manage producers and songwriters in the dance music space, right? And I was uh, managed by Gary Salzman. And he really kind of managed my career. He told me where to be, told me where to go. We we toured, we wrote songs for certain people. Like everything was figured out. And I remember having this conversation with him, like, you know, what's next? Like, I feel like we're doing the same thing over and over again. He's like, no, we just keep doing this and building. And we keep doing this and building and eventually blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, cool. That's the plan. And then early in the pandemic, 2020, um, he ended up passing away, RIP. And it, I was just sitting there like, wait, like from sunup to sundown, my life was figured out and my whole career was figured out up until right, bam, now. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, yeah. uh, what do I want? 
what do I want to do? Is this what I wanted to do? Because I was just kind of doing what I thought I was supposed to do, listening to my manager, just being the artist. And then that was when it hit me, when it was like, you know, I'm having trouble in the studio. I'm having issues that I have never talked about. Um, mm -hmm. Like the fact that I don't talk to people about my blindness, the fact that I hide it and do all I can to like try to pretend that I'm not blind um, is what's making people uncomfortable in the studio. So yeah. why don't I just address it? Or when I go to networking events, I'm like literally on the arm of my manager because I can't see who's in the room and I don't want to be weird and act strange or make people feel uncomfortable. But why don't I just address it? Why don't I just start addressing all these things that I was hiding behind this other person that mm -hmm. we were creating? Yeah. And the pandemic gave me that. So it gave me the, hey, I want to start being myself. I want to start talking about this stuff. And I remember the first, one of the first things I did was Women in Music, which is this big organization um, that supports like women pr professionals in the music industry, managers or um, agents or label reps. They have this whole big network and every once in a while they have these webinars that they had started during, during the pandemic. And I remember they were doing like a diversity one mm -hmm. and they had like, you know, uh, a like a Latina woman, they had a black person, they had a Asian, whatever. Right. And they were all talking about diversity and they were talking about LGBTQ issues and all sorts of stuff. And then I started going like, is anybody going to talk about disability? Mm -hmm. And I was in the comments and like, nobody was addressing my comment. Right. So I just right. kept going. I was like, well, but I started like Googling shit and like putting maps and shit in the comments and like, like long whole Wikipedia articles. <laughs> like, yes. Finally, somebody addressed it and was like, we see that somebody thinks we should discuss disability more. Perhaps we should have it our own panel. And then I ended up leaving feeling like slightly embarrassed, but also slightly miffed that they didn't really talk about anything I said in the comments. Then I get like yeah. a call from the women in music leadership going, we want you to run the disability discussion. And then that was the start. I ran the discussion. I then got asked by the Grammys to run a discussion. I then this, I then that. And I just started becoming the person talking about disability in the music industry, uh, all starting from me, like being pissed off during the pandemic and just chomping away at the comments. And yeah. the pandemic gave us that. And so I I can only really thank it. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's, it's funny. I feel like you tapped into two things. Like when you were talking about your journey with Gary, one thing that, and I meant, I spoke about it yesterday in an interview with um, an artist, you know, there is this tendency to plateau, you know, mm -hmm. like you're, you could become very repetitive and you're like, well, if I, it's like repeat, wash, repeat, wash. And then eventually everything will, will come, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's kind of like this weird live action manifesting ritual that we all do in mm -hmm. hopes to go somewhere. And it, it yeah. can be really, really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and too, like, I think about that a lot uh, about, you know, disabilities in this industry, because it is not disability friendly. I think that even asking for a chair, if you need it, is like, yes. well, we don't have any. <laughs> or like, what do you want to, it, it's like treated kind of like special treatment. Yeah. A little bit right. sometimes. Yeah. I, I, right. Like I, I go to all these concerts and I, 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 I had like leg issues for a while and mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to have to like act like I don't because yeah. even letting you in can be hard, mm -hmm. but B, it, it's kind of like, I thought to myself, wow, whether you're the fan or the artist, even mm -hmm. you're not getting near that stage or on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And it's really kind of a, so the thing about the music industry is that a lot of it is built on clout right? You either made it or you didn't. There's a very, um, no one really looks at the sort of middle class of artistry or anything like that. That's what kind of differentiates it from being an actor, right? Yeah. Uh, in Hollywood, you can, you can actually make a decent living just doing acting gigs here and there. But in music, the way it's, and it's not even really true. In music, you can actually do the same thing as well. You can be a mid-level artist and make money touring. You can be a mid-level producer. But the way that the industry frames it is it's either you've made it or you didn't, right? Yeah. And so it's either you're going to get the red rollout carpet 
or you were going to be sort of like ignored and yeah. not even talking about disabilities. If we're even just talking about like gender, right. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, race, um, preference, identity, all of these other things, um, are kind of backseated, uh, a lot of the times. I mean, we're still trying to get gender equity. I was just talking to the, um, recording Academy the other day. And we were talking about like things like the Annenberg study about like how many women are actually in jobs and power in the music industry. And they're like, oh, we're up from, you know, such and such tiny percent to such and such tiny percent. Let's celebrate. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Guys, you know? we've gone from 8% to hold on yeah. nine. Yeah. And it's like, dude, <laughs> we are 50% women. Actually, there's more women than men in the world. So let's just remember that there's actually literally more women than men, not much more, but I think it's like 52% women. Yeah, we need to raise and that see, number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so exactly. So the thing about it is that, you know, a lot of folks don't recognize or realize that we're far behind even on just the most basic of issues, which is the X and Y chromosome. Meanwhile, we're also trying to fight for race. We're also trying to fight for underrepresented religions, underrepresented yeah. preferences and identities. And then you want to toss disability onto it. And when we talk about underrepresented um, preferences and when we talk about underrepresented identities and disabilities, those are also intersectioned with gender issues. Those are also intersectioned with race yeah. issues. Yeah. And so let's say for instance, a white male, a straight white male with a disability is going to get better treatment than a trans black female with a disability. So it's like, there are so many nuances to the human experience that are just yeah. being shucked aside because for the last, you know, 500 years, even scientific study was only based on like a very specific and particular type of human. Um, so anyway, let me not go on that rant. That's not what we're talking no, about. We're talking no, about no, music. No. It's, it's, funny. Music. it's funny when you think about that, because I, 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 I not only agree with you, but I also think you know, kind of what you said, it, it's bombarding. It's bombarding for the people who suffer and bombarding for the people who are supposed to kind of help in either ease or end that suffering. It's right. because there's so many nuances and we work in generalizations mm -hmm. and that's not always easy. You can't yeah. blanket everything. Yeah, you can't blanket everything. I think people come to me and they're like, okay, Lachi, how do you be an ally, right? Yeah. And you know, I think a lot of allies get a lot of um, a bad rep because they're trying, but then because they're trying, uh, the folks they're trying to help finally find someone they can yell at, right? <laughs> um, yeah. But at the same time, it's like the thing that uh, my one of my pet peeves, really honestly, about the word allyship is that a lot of folks think ally means how do I help you? Um, I am it, I am from a privileged place, and I want to kind of dupe my hand down into the river and keep you from yeah. drowning. But that's not really allyship. I mean, if we think about really what the term ally comes from, it means friendship. It means when we think of the allied forces, it was folks who would help each other, not one person like kind of lifting someone else out. And so it's it's more of a, a collaborative situation. It's like, how do we find value in each other to help mm -hmm. each other? That's mm -hmm. what allyship is. It's when you don't come to me and say, how do I uh, give you a hand out? It's more how do I use you as an opportunity and you use me as an opportunity? How do we see value in each other to make you know, the whole world better? That's what allyship is. And once you kind of look at folks from that perspective, uh, it changes the entire uh, discussion. You start recognizing folks uh, as an asset because of their race or their gender or their disability. You start recognizing the value and the sort of the problem solving proposition that they bring, the, the lived experience that you don't have that they have that helps open your mind and change your thought that they can bring to the table. And, and that's why it's difficult to be an ally, huh? And open your heart. And open your heart, open There's your so mind, open love. your heart, and open your wallets. <laughs> yes, pay for my drinks. Let's Boom. have love. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I love, I agree with you. And I, I, I feel like I, it makes me curious, you know, going back to the music then, how do you feel your music is an act of friendship? Ah, well, I love that. So... <clears throat> So I've, I've been able to do a lot of really cool things in my music career. I've been able to work with some household DJs and household names and tour and work with labels, right? 
But I don't think any of that is the cool, the coolest thing I've ever done in my music career. I think one of the coolest things I've ever done was be able to put out Black Girl Cornrows. Um, because what I'm doing is I'm saying, hi, everyone. This yeah. is everything about Wachi. Like, you can come into my house. Anybody on the earth can listen to that song and then knock on my door. And that's who you're going to get. <laughs> like, we are now friends. You know everything about me. I didn't. So up until Black Girl Cornrows, you know, I worked with like, you know, other folks and I wrote songs to, I don't know what, what they wanted. Let me put it like that. You know, what should I do? What, what, how can I sound so that I fit in with where you're going so that I fit in with the genre so that I can like fit into whatever this playlist is so that I can blah, blah, blah. And that's what I was doing all the way up until Black Girl Cornrows, where I was like, I want to talk about myself. I want to like introduce myself to people and talk about the issues that I care about, which is, you know, my heritage, my disability, Black women, dope hair. And, um, you know, I, she's like, my hair's cool too. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. but I, 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 it's so funny. Every time some, it's like if somebody says smile, you find yourself smiling. Right. Do you ever find right. that, like, if somebody says hair or like if somebody says itchy, you're like, you're like, yeah, why, you know, what? Oh, maybe I you do scratch. That? I am maybe a little scratch. <laughs> it was like mirror neurons. That's what it is. Yeah, like. mirror uh, neurons. I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <continue. laughs> um, but I think that it's it's me saying, you know, let me introduce you into like, let me give you an accessible way to introduce you into this world. And mm-hmm. so the reason why I do that is because. During my advocacy uh, as a musician with a disability, right, there are two sides to the issue, right? Like I mentioned, there's the, the oh, the, I don't want to say oppressed, but like the marginalized, right, who are hurt and who are going through a bunch of bullshit and who've been denied a lot. And when they finally get voice, they're yelling and screaming, right? Yeah. Which I get it. But then there's the other side who have been ignoring the entire thing. And then when they finally get to hear it, all they hear is yelling and screaming. And so they're like, uh, I either don't want to touch it or I don't like feeling guilty. So please, you know, I don't want to be shamed. And so my whole thing is let's have fun while we're doing this. Like, let's put this to dance music. Let's infiltrate pop culture. Let me be your friends. Let's be friends and do this together. Um, yeah. And that's what Black Girl Cornrows is. So Black Girl Cornrows at its heart is my visual description. Mm-hmm. And so in the blind blind culture in the blind community there's this thing called visual description where folks will say what they look like at the top of a meeting or the top of a conference and so it'll be like hello my name is David I am a white man with freckles and blah 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 so that blind people have access to like who's in the room and whatever defining features of the voice that they're going to be hearing from yeah and so one of the issues is that when we're implementing this idea of self-description um allies or, or folks trying it out do it wrong because they'll spend like 45 minutes talking about their shirt or what's behind them or like it's like we need to just move on They're like now the meeting's <laughs> over <laughs> so, like, well, well, love your outfit though like <laughs> so, but the, the point I'm trying to make is is that it doesn't have to be so like hard and scary you know yeah. so my self-description is black woman cornrows right Mm. and so I'll be like hello everybody my name is Lachi I'm black woman cornrows I am she her I live in New York City and I'm a musician and I can't wait for us to talk about it and I'll toss it to the next person so that's what black girl cornrows is but I love the fact that when people self-describe they're also giving away a little bit of like who they are yes if you're like hi, my name is Richard. And I, well, we now know that you're like kind of scared <laughs> person. Yeah. Or if you're like, yeah, my name's Stacy. I'm pleasantly plump. I got da da da. We're like, all right, Stacy's an Aries. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> We know Stacy's horoscope now, don't right, we? Exactly. We know her whole book <laughs> from her name and the way she spoke for four minutes, for four seconds. And so that's what Black Girl Cornrows is. It kind of like tells you who I am. Uh, goes through sort of like what I rep. Um, somebody was like, you didn't say New York. I'm such a New York like portrait. And they were absolutely right. I didn't rep New York in the song. So my next song is going to be like New York. It's going to be the word New York for three and a half minutes. Um, yeah. It's about 
repping who you are and I get to show who I am. So I talk about how I look, but I talk about my heritage. Uh, I mentioned my blindness. We celebrate self-description. Um, I met, I talk about like the fact that I, I'm funny and I'm cheeky and I'm slightly intelligent, but not too intelligent to scare people. Um, <laughs> only slightly and so and then I bring in my friends and I'm queer aligned and like and I get to bring in my friends and we all have a really good time so that's what the song's about yeah do you feel <laughs> it's, it's funny I, I I'm curious you know you're you're finally kind of introducing you to the world it, 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 do you feel like this is the beginning or the ending of a chapter because which or they kind of one and the same now that I say it out loud I think that this is very definitely the beginning of a chapter because so I started running around for like the last year going, we need to like bring, you know, disability culture to mainstream discussion. And that's going to happen through music. I was going like, you know, hip hop culture brought out, brought up the black experience, you know, rural culture brought up like the country experience. So uh, or rural uh, country music brought up the rural experience, yeah. hip hop music brought up the black experience. And so I'm like, okay, well, why don't we bring up the disability experience through music? And everybody was like, oh, well, that's because, you know, country started really becoming pop and popular and hip hop beats started becoming pop and popular. And so I was like, okay, when we sift through the musicians who are out about their disability and we sift through their music, it's very much not popular music, right? And by popular, I mean, the, the like the dictionary term of the word pop music, which is like music that people find popular. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Instead of preaching it, let me fucking just do it. So I was <laughs> like, let me actually do this experiment of making a popular sounding and my it has to be my kind of music, which is EDM, but like a song that's accessible to pop culture and throw in a disability narrative that's not like, oh, I'm disabled, please put money in my hat. It's like, you know, we're yeah. talking about like having a good time and having a disability. So I went to this woman named Bridget Antoinette and um, she runs this organization called Pop Culture Collaborative. And what they do is they support new narratives and just like give money to art and say like, it has to be a new narrative, throw it into the world. So I pitched her my idea. And I was like, I want to do like a whole album. I want it to be a video album. I want to do all this stuff. And she's like, slow down. I'll just do one song. I'll support one song and we'll see where this goes. So she supported one song. Um, and I was like, I'm going to get everybody involved. I was like, I'm going to write this track. I'm going to get my friend Question ATL, who is also a blind rapper on here. We're going to get Evie Oddly. She has a disability and she's a drag queen and she won RuPaul's Drag Race to also rap on here. We're going to work with Black Caviar, who had always been one of my favorite um, uh, DJs for like the past like five years. And when I asked them if they wanted to do it, they were like, we're fans of yours. I was like, what? Um, and then we love got, you. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what? Um, and then Emily uh, Lazar, who is one of the very few uh, mastering engineers who is a female who's won a Grammy. So girl power um, brought her on board. And then um, Mafreshu, who is an Iranian artist, a female Iranian artist with her own like sort of artist agency. We had her do the artwork. So we were like supporting Iranian women. Um, and so we brought everybody together. And I, I have a feeling I'm like missing a person or two. Um, and then my manager now, who is Arthur, who is actually neurodiverse, we all came together and we're like, let's fucking make this song. And let's not just, it's not just a song. It has a whole story behind it. It's being supported by the Pop Culture Collaborative. Everybody on the track has something to bring from a marginalized community. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what I am going to do from now on. We are going to be infiltrating pop culture with marginalized narratives. We're going to make sure everybody included has something to give and something, their own story to bring, because we want to practice what we're preaching and have everybody involved be a piece of the puzzle. I just kept being brought into rooms and people were just like, oh, she sings. And they, and, uh, and that's cool. You know, it's like, oh, we, we want to, we don't see race. We don't see da, da, da. Just come in and sing. I'm like, I'll come in and sing, but bitch, I'm black. So see my race, see the history that comes with it and see all the assets that come with that. Like when people go like, oh, I'm colorblind. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm really blind. Meanwhile, I'm bringing people with all sorts of different colors. So we want 
folks to see the asset in difference. And so I'm like, that's going to be me here on out. And we're starting with Black Girl Cornrows. Woo! And you know, I, I, I know it's so <laughs> simple, but it's also like, it is a fun song. Right. And I right. think that, <laughs> no, I think when you think marginalized, you don't think fun. Right. And yes. I, I think one of the, the hardest things about discussing marginalizations, and it, it's funny, I don't know why I, I reviewed Blonde and it was a very controversial mm. film. And I, I said, I think the, the difficulty about discussing trauma, particularly in mainstream fears, is this idea that you're just traumatized. Right. You're actually like, you do live life. Like, you know, you do have fun. You do go out like you do. And I think that that's what music, your music particularly is for. Yes, there are marginalizations, there are disabilities, but there is always life. There's always life. And there, I mean, that's the one thing we all have in common here at this like party that we've all been invited to, like called life, right? Yeah. It's like, we're here. Yeah. So yeah, some things are going to suck. Some things suck for everybody. Everybody has like some things that society makes them feel they need to hide. Um, yeah. My whole thing is you need to celebrate that thing that society is telling you you need to hide. And I think, you know, earlier we talked about doing emotions and people capping out and not knowing what to do next or how to get to that next level. And I think it's once you start embracing that shit that society told you to hide, because there's always going to be a contingent of people that are like, holy shit, me too. There's always going to be the holy shit, me too people. And they're never going to get that moment until you come out and show them that. And I think that's what we're really celebrating. Um, counterculture, you know, that's a fun word. That, <laughs> that makes it sound fun. We're celebrating the, yo, I'm different. Don't you wish you could celebrate your difference too? Um, yeah, I think that's what we're celebrating. We are celebrating the holy shit, me too, people. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's what this interview should be called. A, a <laughs> celebration of the holy shit, me too. Right, right though? <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that. Well, I, I'm also only supposed to have you for like 15 minutes. We went a little over, but this oh, was yeah, right. absolutely great. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts, any final feelings? I don't know. I mean, really, honestly, 2023 is going to really be the year for us. You know what I mean? We're doing fashion. We're doing our glam canes. Um, we're doing like, you know, uh, we're doing TV. We're doing music. We're doing radio. We're doing really big things. I think I would just close with, you know, 2023 is the year where pop culture is going to be infiltrated. So watch out. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husband, because we're coming. <laughs> yes, holy shit, it's them people. <laughs> we have it, yeah. boo. People yeah. need to come and check out um, Lachi Music, but I also always want to throw out Ramped. Um, we're recording artists and music professionals with disabilities. That's my organization that I run, um, supporting other dope artists like myself to be able to tell their stories and share their narratives. So that's rampd.org. Nice. Well, thank awesome. you so much. Um, please send over the recording. And this was really, really great. I loved it. Awesome. Yeah, no, thank you so much for this is a great way to start my morning. Now I'm hyped. Bitch, I'm yeah. Hyped. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should be too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay so um, we'll send have, you that in a sec. All right. Have a great day. I will you see too. you. Bye. Okay.